Welcome to Live, Love, Play. My name is Ross, and this is the first edition of For the Love Of. And joining me today is Stephen Weiss, creator of the upcoming film Broken Spirits. Thank you for joining me today, Stephen. I'm glad to be here. All right, well, let's get right into it then. Why don't you tell me a bit about yourself, your background, and your experience up till now? Wow, okay. I'll try to give you the short version. <laughs> uh, you know, I uh, grew up in the Appalachian Mountains, and I always loved two things. I loved computers, uh, and I loved adventuring. And uh, so I kind of had those two calls upon me my whole life. You know, I, and when I went to uh, college, finally, at George Mason University, I had the option of either doing computer science or music, and I thought, well, do I want to eat? And I thought, yes. <laughs> so, so I actually did computer science with a minor in music, but while I was there, I did, uh, I did uh, theater. Uh, you know, I did musical theater and, and, and some plays and, and stuff like that because I, I loved all that stuff. So I've kind of always been torn between the two things uh, and ended up, you know, I've done a bunch of crazy stuff. I worked for the CIA right out of college because I was right there in Virginia. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had a top secret clearance and everything. Nice. And then uh, I, uh, they sent me to a bunch of training and I thought, wow, it'd be fun to be a computer trainer. So it wasn't long after that that I ended up doing computer training and then I went ahead and got my master's in computers so I could teach at colleges. And, and I was teaching at a college a few years later in North Carolina and I thought, is this just the only thing I want to do with my life is just teach computers until I die? And uh, I think part of me was like, no, I want to try something different before I get too old to do anything else. And so... Uh, I was like, okay, I'll move to L.A. and pursue acting. So, <laughs> Just about, go for broke, huh? Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, so I had this, you know, career going and everything for about, you know, 10 years in computers. But I uh, jumped out of that and, and went out to L.A. And I still have been teaching out here uh, to kind of pay the bills uh, part-time. But, uh, you know, I got into a bunch of cool stuff. You know, I, I I was fortunate enough to know some people in the anime industry, and I got to do voice acting like right off the bat as soon as I got here. So I did some voice for uh, the anime Helsing, uh, which is actually one of my Ooh. favorite anime. Anyway, so that was cool. And uh, then I got to do video games Sengoku Basara. Uh, I co-produced the English dub for an anime, uh, Kick Heart, uh, with Richard Epcar. And nice. Uh, I did, you know, a bunch of small parts in, in films and things like that, but, uh, you know, I, I ended up being out here for a while, and I also, when I moved out here, I, my struggles began with uh, chronic fatigue, so it kind of hampered my ability to do as much as I wanted to do. I can imagine. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I decided uh, that, uh, you know, I really wanted to go after this acting thing, so I gave it uh, everything I had, and, and that's really kind of where the, the movie comes in. Where, where, where did this sudden urge to, to just pick up and leave to, and, and start acting? Why, why acting? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Uh, it, it, you know, I love music, but I think I love music so much that I never would want it as a job because it would ruin it. I can so, understand that. <laughs> right. And, I have a lot of experience as a, as a vocalist uh, from, from past, from past my life up to now too oh yeah there you go you know i was uh, my music minor was was uh, vocal so i was classically trained and everything but uh it seemed that it would ruin it if i did it for money so <laughs> i never did uh but i did uh and i did get to you know i was in choirs i got to tour uh i toured israel uh for the three thousand year anniversary of jerusalem oh wow choir. Yeah, that was that was amazing and uh you know the uh the israeli people were so welcoming there i i almost didn't want to leave uh, <laughs> but I visited yeah. there not long ago as well. Oh wow, cool! Uh, but uh, so yeah, but your question. So I yeah, I I actually thought of three things when I was in North Carolina. I was like, okay, there's three things I could do. I could be the IT guy on cruise ships and just travel around the world with these cruise ships and keep their computer labs running because everybody's got to check their emails obsessively even when they're on a cruise, right? That's not bad. <laughs> right. So I was trying to get into that. Or I was like, I could teach in Europe and just, you know, do the same thing. But I'll be in Europe teaching classes. And and, uh, and then I was like, or I could do acting. And this, I really, you know, I believe in God. And I and I feel like there are these signs that I was supposed to move out here. Uh, some friends of mine in Virginia that I'd done a short film with 
um, said, hey, we're moving to L.A. And then I happened to run into an old friend of mine from high school at Dragon Con in Atlanta. Nice. And he had he's a rock star now. Uh, Jason Charles Miller, he was a singer for Godhead, and now he does his own solo stuff. And uh, we went to high school together, and he's like, dude, you should come to L.A., and I can hook you up. And, and you know, I was like, oh, okay, that seems like another sign that I should go to L.A. So there was enough signs that I decided to go ahead and come out here. So just a big bright light that said, do this. <laughs> yeah, out of the three things I was thinking of, uh, there were only pointers toward the one, so. Very nice. Well, it's it, you sound like you're enjoying yourself so far. Oh, it's been a crazy trip. You know, I, I sit there and think, was it worth it? And I have no way to tell, but I do know that I would have regretted it if I had just stayed in North Carolina and taught at that same college for the last 10 years almost. Sometimes you just got to take a risk. Yeah, yeah, and you never know. And and sometimes if the risk doesn't doesn't pan out, at least you tried. That's right. So you're credited as the creator for Broken Spirits. What does that what does that title mean to you and your production? Well, technically, I am the uh, producer, writer, and star of the the sci-fi action film Broken Spirits, and you know, creator because it was my idea. Um, Basically, in, in 2010, I, I came down with uh, serious chronic fatigue, and I was in bed almost the entire year. Uh, but once I started recovering, thanks to about seven doctors I you know went to and, and started these hormone treatments, I realized that it could come back because no one really understands how chronic fatigue works. And I thought, while I'm feeling better again, I'm going to make a feature film uh, to have something serious to show for my coming out to L.A., all right. Sound wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a normal story. <laughs> but... No, you, you just you you're a big dreamer. I can tell. You just have these ideas. You know what? Uh, I'm I'm gonna go big. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I had a Mustang GT at the time, and I enjoyed it. I always I used to race cars, and I always liked having a, a sports car, uh, and. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine about making this film, and and I was I was thinking about selling the Mustang to finance it, and I, I you know I realized I said you know what I moved to L.A. to act and be in films, not to have a nice car. So you know I went and sold the car and used it you know for seed money for this film. That's wow. Just <laughs> wow. That that's that's dedication right there. I guess I believe if you're going to do something, you've got to just do it all the way. <laughs> yes, you do. That's that's very admirable. Oh, so, well, thanks. So what else can you tell me about your the movie itself? Well, because I'd done a few voice acting gigs, I knew all these really cool voice actors. And, you know, they were pretty big. They, uh, you know, I know most of the big name voice actors now for being at conventions with them and everything. And, and I said, hey, guys. Who wants to be in a movie, you know? And a bunch of them did. And some of them were, you know, just busy and, and couldn't do it, the, the dates that we were shooting. Uh, like, I, I had really wanted Matt Mercer to play one of the bad guys, but he was shooting a horror movie during then. But uh, Richard Epcar, Christina V, uh, Spike Spencer, and, and Vic Mignogna all said that they would be happy to be in the film because I think most voice, voice actors are actors at heart and, they, you know, they want to be on screen too. Those are some pretty big names. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, the, that's the thing is, you know, no matter what, some people will watch this film because I, I got those people, and so I had an advantage there, and I took it. It's definitely one of the things that piqued my interest. I, I'm familiar with Vic Magonia more, most than the others uh, as far as your actors so far, but after reading the bios, I'm surprised how many voices that I recognize out of the group. Yeah, well, Christina V's got the real big thing going on with the Ladybug show on Nickelodeon. Right. Uh, I, I mentioned Vic. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Star Trek Continues, his, his Star Trek series, as well as his work in uh, Full Metal Alchemist. And I recently started watching Digimon again recently and recognized him there as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, Vic and I are both in the video game uh, Sengoku Basara 3. Nice. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I and I've known Vic since 2006. We met at a convention in uh, uh, Tennessee, and uh, he gave me an interview. Uh, we, we actually talked about our mutual faith in God as well. 
Very nice, very nice. And Richard Epcar. I didn't recognize the name at first, but just looking through his his resume, I mean, the Joker, Raiden, big, big names right there. Yeah, I mean, he's been in everything. You know, it's funny because now that I've been out here a while and met all these people, I'll, I'll just be playing video games and my friends will be in them. I'm like, oh, there's, I just killed Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fatality, but my buddy. Yes. <laughs> So you've, you've got a real familiarity with a lot of these actors. What was it like to personally work with them after being on a familiar basis for so long? Well, it was like working with friends, you know. Uh, and, and I actually brought in a lot of my friends that I believed had talent uh, that were not voice actors for the film. You know, I really grabbed everyone that I could think of uh, to bring in that I, that I thought would be good in the movie. And, you know, I mean, some of my friends there weren't, there weren't roles that really fit them, but I tried to bring in as many people as I could that I thought had talent because I felt the same way. Like, uh, I, I had talent and I hope somebody gives me a chance, you know? And so I was trying to do that, but that's not really what you asked. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, it, it was great fun. And, uh, you know, working with everyone was different. Richard and Spike had a great, uh, rapport on set and they just goofed around and joked around so much, even though they're kind of enemies in the film. So uh, between takes, there was a lot of fun. And uh, we all got kind of bonded together out of the difficult experiences of shooting in the desert heat and the desert sand because it was pretty brutal at times. Oh, I can imagine. And uh, Christina and V and I had worked years ago together on a little web show that I had started called Anime Olympics. And so I, I really feel comfortable with her and I liked working with her a lot. And, uh, you know, I really felt like that we both... Uh, you know, go together well on screen. I don't know. <laughs> That's how I felt about it. And, and working with her was really good. Vic, we had, Vic plays my brother, uh, and he's in a flashback of, of a car accident. Basically, I have to relive this nightmare of, of uh, my brother getting killed in a car accident. And so I'm trapped in this car with Vic. So uh, there was just, it was a night shoot, and uh, just Vic and I sat in the car. And uh, one thing I'll never forget is uh, my director was pointing out to me, he said, I'll tell you what, you, you watch Vic because he's a good actor. And I say, well, what do you mean? He says, well, even before I say action, as soon as the cameras start rolling, he's going in character. You are waiting until I say action. But the difference is if I ever need any of that extra footage before or after the shot, you aren't giving it to me because you're out of character as soon as I say cut and you're only in when, you, when I say action. But he's in character before and after the shot. So you could learn from him. And so that is something that I uh, learned as a film actor from him. Wow. Uh, I've done plays and, and things like that in the past, and I currently work on audio series, so I don't have much experience in film, but that's an interesting bit of advice. I'd never thought of it on my own. Oh, yeah. I never would have either. No one had specifically told me that. But, uh, you know, Peter is looking for... You know, you've got to be greedy with your footage when you've only got so many days to shoot, and when you get to the editing room... You want to have extra things just in case you need to insert something. That way you save on any reshoots, which you may or may not afford. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we kind of were only going to do reshoots as a last resort, so we definitely hoped we didn't have to. So about the, the movie itself, you said sci-fi action movie, correct? Yeah. Uh, basically, it's about four young people who go out to the desert to a sweat lodge. And so they're doing this new age ritual thing in the sweat lodge, sweating out your impurities and cleansing yourself. But uh, somehow the sweat lodge is also a portal to a parallel dimension. So our four young people end up uh, getting transported to the other dimension. And in the other dimension are these evil spirits that have been trapped there looking for a way back to our world. And once they see us there, they're planning on stealing our bodies so they can come back to our world. Nefarious. <laughs> yes. Yeah, on, on set, you know, we called them the evils. It was um, uh, Spike Spencer, uh, XL Cummings, Peter Jang, and uh, Dave Pereira were the, uh, the four evils. Very nice. Uh, what, uh, what inspiration did you have for the, the story? Well, it was a lot of restrictions that we had because we didn't have much money. And we pretty much had a desert location, so we had to shoot in the desert. And uh, that would work with our budget, and, and someone had already agreed to let us use the location. 
And so we we did that and we thought, what could we do that's still sci-fi? Because I really wanted to do some kind of sci-fi. It was in the desert and we're like, oh, parallel dimension. So it looks pretty much the same, you're, but you're in the middle of the desert in this other dimension. And um, so that was a big restriction plus budget. We couldn't put in huge special effects. Uh, you know, and we, uh, you couldn't have a car chase or, you know, <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. Uh, we had to really, th so we were really limited. So it was a challenge, you know, I, I accepted as a writer, uh, my roommate, uh, Joseph Medina also, uh, helped me write it. And he, uh, he went to screenwriting school. So he helped me a lot too, because I'd written a few screenplays, but he really knew what he was doing. And, and we really blocked this one out. And, uh, of course, it went through a lot of changes. We did about six or seven revisions before we shot it. But, uh, you know, so it was it was really the heart of it was, well, we want to do a sci-fi and we're kind of limited to this desert location. So here's what we came up with. I think it was Nicholas Meyer that said restriction breeds creativity. Well, yeah, I definitely would agree with that. You know, it, I, I saw it as a challenge. I'm like, we can do this. <laughs> Well, you certainly have. The film has, has wrapped filming and editing is ready for le release, right? Yeah, uh, we are down to just a few minor technical corrections uh, that we have to do, but uh, we're already talking with distributors, and uh, we want to get it out there on you know every possible media, so theater, television, uh, video on demand, streaming, DVD, you know, uh, with a whole package. Well, that takes care of my next question. Yeah. Well, yeah, but this is, uh, it's a lot of work because you've got to find a distributor that you like and that is going to give you a good deal and that has connections that will actually get you to where you want to go. And then, of course, they want some things. They want to make money. And so uh, I, I'm learning, you know, I never have done this before in terms of distribution. And um, it's... Uh, uh, you know, I didn't realize it was this much work. I thought once we finished post, that was the main part of the job. But there's uh, a million legal requirements that we have to fulfill before we can put this thing out there. And so I'm going through all that now. And, and we're setting up a corporation. We're, we're filing copyrights. We're, we're showing clear chain of title. We're, we're accounting for all of our contracts. You know, uh, budget we have to show. Fortunately, we have a really good... Uh, a, a budget of my uh, director's wife is an accountant, so <laughs> she put that together. Just calling in all your your friends and friends of friends to get this done, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, and and uh, mostly now at this point, I'm doing all the stuff because um, I want it done, and it's one of those things like if you wanted something done right, you do it yourself. <laughs> so yeah, I'm doing as much of it as I can, but I have relied on serious help from a lot of people to get to where we are now. So what are your plans uh, following up on Broken Spirits? Is this going to be a one-off production? Are you going to do something else after this? I don't know. Um, I really have the next six months to a year planned to promote the film. And so we're, we're working on scheduling convention appearances and, uh, you know, special screenings like film festivals and stuff like that. Uh, the, the, the challenging thing is, is still the, the chronic fatigue that I deal with. I've recovered somewhat, but I, I did relapse. You know, um, I mentioned in 2010 I had the, uh, you know, the, the year in bed, and then I got better, and we decided to make a movie. But then I, I relapsed a couple of years ago, and I still am kind of halfway between recovery and uh, you know, being taken fully out of the picture. So I'm not sure. Uh, I'm praying for a miracle that I will be you know, completely better. But, you know, with right now, I'm very limited in how much I can do. And so right now, between my part time job and the film, that pretty much takes up everything. But I, voice I can still do. So I'm really hoping that uh, that maybe this will will lead me to at least some more voice work uh, that I can go and do, uh, because that is not as physically demanding as going on set for, you know, eight hours in the desert. <laughs> no kidding. Well, I'll say, say a prayer for you as well. Thank you very much. I'll take it. All right. Uh, anything else that you'd like to say about uh, Broken Spirits or any other projects that you have going? Broken Spirits is what's going on right now, and and uh, I yeah, I, you know, keep in touch with the website if you're interested. It's brokenspiritsfilm.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook. Just look for Broken Spirits Movie, I believe it is on Facebook, 
and uh, I'm, I'm posting updates and stills and and uh, trailers. I'm working on another trailer. You know, the other tr the previous trailers were kind of more uh, tongue in cheek because it's got a little bit of campiness, goofiness, and I'm putting together a serious kind of scary trailer for the next one. So uh, you know, keep that in mind and look at uh, you know look for your uh, local conventions. They they you know, are going to be having screenings and we might even have special events with Q and A's and, and actors and everything. So a whole lot of stuff will be going on in the next few months with broken spirits. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Stephen, for joining me. Uh, this has been live, love, play, uh, for, it, for the love of film. My name is Ross and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.